Question 1. What is OpenAM? Answer, OpenAM is an open source access management entitlements and federation server platform backed by ForgeRock. OpenAM originated as OpenSSO, an access management system developed by Sun Microsystems owned by Oracle. Question 2. How OpenAM helps us? Answer, OpenAM provides a service named as Access Management, which involves managing the access to all resources available within the network. Once we set up OpenAM to manage access, we have a service to take control of who can access what resources, when, and under what circumstances. Yet, a resource can be just about anything accessible over the network from a web page to an application to a web service. Question 3. Can OpenAM be centrally managed? Answer. OpenAM centralizes all access control by handling both validation and authorization. Validation is confirming of an identity, for example confirming that a user has successfully logged in. Authorization is determining whether to grant access to someone who is valid. Question 4. How OpenAM validates? Answer. OpenAM centralizes validation by using a variety of authentication modules. Modules connect to identity repositories that store identities and provide authentication services. The identity repositories are implemented as lib directories, relational databases, radius, windows authentication, one-time password services, other standards-based access management systems and much more. OpenAM lets us chain together the validation services used which lets you configure stronger authentication for more sensitive resources for example. It allows to set up modules that remember a device when the user logs in successfully. Question 5. How OpenAM authorizes? Answer. OpenAM centralizes authorization by letting the user use OpenAM to manage access policies separate from applications and resources. Instead of building access policy into web application, we can install a policy agent with the web application to request policy decisions from OpenAM. This way we can avoid issues that could arise when developers must embed policy decisions into their applications. Question 6. Explain the software requirements to implement OpenAM. Answer. The following are the software requirements to for effective installation of OpenAM. The Apache HTTP server used to support the OpenAM projects that rely on web pages. Apache Tomcat, which provides a web container for OpenAM platform. OpenAM is a Java web application. It needs a web container established by Apache Tomcat. OpenAM Core Server with its console. For OpenAM, the core server with OpenAM console acts as the pivotal to a web application. During the configuration, OpenAM sets up the OpenDJ directory for the purpose of holding OpenAM's configuration and serve as an identity store and authentication service. Open OpenAM Apache Policy Agent to intercept requests from users and to enforce OpenAM formulated access policy decisions. Since OpenAM is a Java web application, the Java development kit is pre-installed. Question 7. What do you understand by SINL 2.0 SSO and Federation? Answer. SINL 2.0 SSO is part of the Federated Access Management. Federation permits access management across the organizational boundaries. Federation allows organizations to share the identities and services without giving away their organizational information and the services they provide. Question 8. What are the steps followed in order to set up OpenAM to protect the web page? Answer. Prepare your host file. Deploy Apache HTTP server. Deploy Apache Tomcat. Deploy OpenAM. Configure a policy in OpenAM. Create a web policy agent profile. Install OpenAM web policy agent. These steps are used in Linux system whereas for Microsoft Windows, just adapt the examples accordingly. Question 9. What are deployment planning steps in OpenAM? Answer. Following the installation step in project initiation, architectural design, execution of OpenAM system, testing with the help of automation and continuous integration, providing solutions by functional testing, recovery of issues by non-functional testing, supportability. Question 10. What is the need of OpenAM client application programming interfaces? 
Answer, in FEDRIC and OpenAM environments. The OpenAM Java app is offered through the OpenAM Java SDK. Let a user's Java and Java EE applications request OpenAM for authentication and authorization. The exposure of RESTful API, which returns XML or JSON over HTTP, will allow the user to access authentication, authorization, and identity services from web applications using REST clients in the same language as that of the user's choice. Question 11. What are the procedures to upgrade a legacy deployment? Answer. Keep your customized OpenAM server, WAR file organized. Use installing OpenAM core services to arrange a new installation of servers from the new customized WAR file starting with the instructions. After installation is complete, use the sudden do batch command to apply multiple changes with a single command. Authenticate the new service to check if the performance meets the expected level or not. Finally, execute the task of redirecting client application traffic to the new installation from the old deployment. Question 12. What are the functions of OpenAM APIS? Answer. OpenAM provides client application programming interfaces for a number of requirements. The OpenAM Java app is offered through OpenAM Java SDK lets your Java and Java EE applications to call for OpenAM validation in both OpenAM and federated environments. Question 13. What are the functions of OpenAM SPIS? Answer. OpenAM offers Java-based service interfaces to let you extend services for the requirements of your specific deployment. Following is are the steps to implement such plugins. Custom Oath 2.0 Scopes plugins define how OpenAM playing the role of authorization server handles scopes, including what token information to return regarding scopes set when authorization was granted. Custom authentication plugins let OpenAM validate users against a new authentication service or an authentication service specific to the deployment. Post-authentication plugins perform additional processing at the end of the authentication process but before the subject to validation. Post-validation plugins can store information about the authentication in the user's profile or call another system for audit logging purposes. Policy evaluation plugins implement new policy conditions, send attributes from the user profile as part of a policy response, extend the definition of the subjects to whom the policy applies, or customize how policy management is delegated. Question 14. How OpenAM provides functionality to IPv4 and IPv6? Answer. OpenAM provides functionality for IPv4, IPv6 and as a hybrid of both. While the majority of the interaction is done at the back end, there are a few places where the GUI needs some inputs. While setting up policy conditions, these fields follow the same standard which applies to IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 uses a 32-bit integer value with a decimal system. IPv6 uses a hexadecimal system and a colon separates the eight groups of hexadecimal digits. 